Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today we're going to do my ever popular almanac series looking at witchcraft in September and what witchcraft you can do on each day and why. So this video is coming out a little early and that's because I am currently on holiday. I'm not away on holiday, I'm just on holiday at home, which means that I'm running my children around and being a taxi service and generally just, you know, I don't know. So I thought you could have this one a little bit early as a nice surprise because I won't be putting out one next week. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the trends and witchcraft that are happening throughout the month of September. And then we'll look at the nitty gritty detail of the days and what witchcraft you can do and when and why. So, and with that said, let's get into the witchcraft trends. So September is the start of things, isn't it? There's a real new broom kind of feel to September. You know, sweep out the old, get on with the new. We're off to university, we're off to a new school. People like to move jobs in September. They like to move houses in September. It is a, if you want to start something new, now is the time. There is definitely a real feel of new growth about September. Not the earth growth, but personal growth. We are at the height of our powers, literally, in September. The harvest is in, everything is prepared for winter, we are good to go and so now we can concentrate on us. It's a great time to start new projects. The Anglo-Saxon name for September was Holy Month because it's considered a really good time to make offerings. So if you work with deities for example, it's a great time to set up a new altar and create that bond with that deity so that you can work with them. I love September, I love the crispness of the cobwebs as they settle over the bushes in the morning in the mist. I love the blackberries ripening in the hedge. It is just such a glorious month with all the colour and the leaves are still on the trees but turning a beautiful orange. It's a wonderfully glorious month, is it not? September is also the month that resonates very strongly with water. There are a huge amount of watery constellations in the sky. If you look to the south, Pisces Ostremus, the southern fish, is swimming in a water stream poured by Aquarius, the water bearer. They are surrounded by Delphinus, the dolphin, and that strange sea goat, Capricorn, a pair of fishes in Pisces, and Cetus, the sea monster. There is a lot of water energy flowing through September. This is great for you to use in your spells. So should you be aligned with the element water, um, which gets into all the nooks and crannies and gently pushes its way through to find the answer or find the end result, now is the time to perfect those rituals. September is the time for hares. They first bounced into our life in March with their boxing matches and their mad March ways. However, now the young have grown and the fields are awash with hares. You might see a rare white hare, but never harm it. The white hare was always considered to be the shape-shifting witch's animal form. As I said earlier, September is a clean sweep style month. And so you are gonna go back to school, go back to university, start that new job. But you might as well start it with a clean, crisp white shirt and a sharp pencil. So September is the month for you to get your house in order. That is my general overview. Get your house in order and start that new job, that new school with as much aplomb as you can. Now let's move on to the day-to-day -day witchcraft and what witchcraft you can do on which day and why. The 1st of September is the start of the meteorological autumn. We are officially in autumn as if we didn't know it already. However, it is also a great and traditional day for divination. So if you'd like to know a bit more about what the future holds for you, today is the day to go to that tarot card reader to look into your crystal ball and to work out what is coming for you in the near future. 
It is also a weather divination day. If it is fair today, it will be set fair for the whole month of September. So look out for that, because it would be nice to have a month of September being beautiful, wouldn't it? The next date we come to is the 3rd of September. Now this is a rather tricky day. This is a day of marvels and wonders. Now these marvels and wonders can be good or they can be not so good. For example, the Great Fire of London in 1666, which destroyed pretty much most of the town, was at its peak in this time. And this is what I mean by it's a day for marvels and wonders. Great things can happen on this day, but they might be terrible to behold. So look out for that. The 9th of September is the day when traditionally the harvest fairs would finish. And so if you came back from your harvest fair and saw that the countryside was awash with rowan berries, blackberries, the autumn fruits and nuts and apples, pears, damsons, whatever, then you know we're in for a hard winter. And this is all about the earth helping its children get through those winter months with plenty of food. The 11th of September is the day this year when the horned men of Abbotsbury dance. Now this is um, a very strange traditional custom. This happens on the first Monday after the first Sunday after the 4th of September. So this year it falls on the 11th. Now, nobody knows where this came from. The antlers that the men are using have been carbon dated back to the 9th century. So they're really very old. And there's two sets of them, some black ones and some white ones. And I have no idea of the symbolism. If you'd like to leave me a comment below, I would be very pleased to read about it. Nobody really knows what this dance has to do with. It's obviously some leftover of a pagan fertility rite or something, no one knows. There is speculation, however, it is to do with this legend of Hearn the Hunter. Hearn the Hunter was a glorious man, strong, tall, fair, handsome. He was beloved by Richard II, that wicked king of England, as he is known, and he was the favoured huntsman of him. The other huntsmen were incredibly jealous as a result. So one day they called in the services of a magician to cast a spell on him. And so from that time, the poor Hearn found that he was lagging behind the hunt. He was not carrying out his huntsman duties as well as normal. He couldn't keep up. And so Richard II dismissed him from service. And Hearn, in shame and embarrassment, hung himself from an oak tree. After that time, there were rumours of a rather fearsome woodland sprite that appeared to the varying other huntsmen of Richard II who'd called in the magician. And they were terrifying. He would grab them and force them to run with him through the night, exhausted. And then the next morning, they had to get up and still work for their king. This went on for several weeks until one by one the huntsmen started to drop. Eventually, these huntsmen confessed their crimes to Richard II, who promptly had them executed for consorting with magicians. You weren't allowed to in those days, were you? The tree where the Hearn huntsman hung himself from is now known as the Hearn Oak. And not original tree, but its descendant still stands there today. And it has a very, very eerie feel to it. So should you wish to go and play around with some uh, uh, woodland sprites, try the Hearn Oak. The 14th of September is Devil's Nutting Day. And this is a, a rather saucy day. It is when the folk went out to gather the nuts from the hazelnut tree. However, um, when you send young folk out to gather nuts, you know, they follow their instincts and babies tend to arrive nine months later. This is a baby making day. However, you still should watch out because the devil is around and collecting souls on this day. Should you find a hazelnut tree with the nuts on it, don't pick the unripe ones because this is incredibly unlucky. But you do want to pick the double ones that look like a heart because this will bring prosperity to you. Hazelnut trees are awash with tradition. Their branches are used in divining rods and they make a wonderful wand. Always, though, ask the tree first. 
The 15th of September is the time of the new moon, which rises in Virgo. Astrologers believe that new moons have new moon energy and depend on the sign that they are in. So you can make plans for the coming month that align well with the star sign the new moon is in. Virgo is all about routine, organisation and health. And so should you wish to have a new eating regime, go on that diet, start that gym membership. This is the day to do so. The 15th of September is also the last day that Mercury stops being retrograde. So Mercury has been retrograde since the 23rd of August and 15th it returns to its normal position, whatever that may be. I'm no astrologer so I can't really help. Mercury retrograde means that tempers have been fraying, communications have broken down, tech fails as always it does, doesn't it? And plans go awry. So hopefully the 15th of September we'll see this set right. The 23rd of September is the equinox, otherwise known as that great feast of Mabon. This is when day and night are equal and there is an awful lot of witchcraft that we can do on this day. However, I'm not going to go into that here because I will obviously have my own Mabon video coming out in the next couple of weeks. So have a look for that, which will tell you what witchcraft traditions you should follow on this day. I will say, though, that this is also the day where the sun moves into Libra. Those who are born on this day under that Libran sun will be known as great travellers. So if this today is your birthday and it happened to be at the equinox when you were born, have you been a great traveller? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear. The 29th of September is the night of the full moon and this is the last supermoon of the year. Full moons have full moon energy and especially this one which is going to be the biggest and brightest looking in the sky. This moon is a great moon within which to charge your witchcraft tools with. If you've got loads of crystals, just you can just leave them on a windowsill at night. But things like selenite love this moonlight to help them renew their magical energy. This moon, of course, is the harvest moon. It's the first full moon after the equinox. It is a great moon to give thanks and to help with your Mabon altar. So that is what I would do. Or make moon water. Making moon water on a full moon brings all that full moon energy into it and you will find the moon water to be particularly potent in your spells and rituals. Today is also known as Michaelmas. Michaelmas is after St Michael, who is the Christian sun god, really. He has that flaming sword and kicked the devil out of heaven or earth. I can't remember. I'm not great with the Christian mythology. Now, in my opinion, the Christians actually just took over St Michael because he was a very, very pagan god. Michael was known long before the Christians got hold of him, if you know what I mean. This is also crack nut day. It's the last day when your teams of nutting teenagers would go out into the woods and get up to all sorts of shenanigans. And it's also the last day that you can pick blackberries because the devil will spit on them after this day. When St Michael kicked the devil out of wherever he kicked him out of, oh heaven I think, the devil fell to earth and landed on a blackberry bush and he was so cross that he decided to spit on all the blackberries on this day and said therefore... This is the last day that you can pick them and they will still be fresh and ripe. It is tradition to eat roast goose on this day. And if you eat roast goose on the 29th of September, you will not want for money for the rest of the year. So that's nice, isn't it? Have some roast goose and you'll be able to pay for Christmas. So that, my witchlings, is the traditional almanac for this month of September. Let me know in the comments what tradition you like. I would love to hear. <laughs> If you're missing Ginny, do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and join my coven meeting. I promise you, you'll learn so much. The next meeting will be coming up around Mabon, so you could celebrate Mabon by joining my coven. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And if you don't subscribe, I don't get to keep making these videos, especially for you. I will see you in a week or so whenever I get back from holiday.